Chapter 3 from the book Into It is entitled The Holy Trinity. So as, <clears throat> as a request to see another way of life, a different tree, we must become part, we, we must become open to a concept that has stood the test of time. Many, many hearts and souls have gathered strength, love, and compassion in mournful moments through the Holy Trinity. Excuse me. When we can more completely conceive the concept of the meaning, we will be more readily opened having eyes to see the tree of life. This is not an easy story to conceptualize. Much scripture through time and many religions have described in great detail the power and love of God with his story. We look to the other tree, the other tree, for our security because of the misunderstanding through time of the Holy Trinity. This is not a new misunderstanding. This has been God's story from the beginning, <clears throat> and in the very beginning of the story, Adam and Eve could not resist the temptation to eat from the beautiful other tree. Here, I'll show you the picture. Yeah. <laughs> So if you can uh, do a painting of that picture, <laughs> okay, sorry, um, it is the misunderstanding of the Holy Trinity that contorts humankind through time to depend on the other tree for life, health, and security. And it's not for me to tell you what the true meaning is wish it were that simple, but I am not your savior. I'm just like you in absolutely every way if you consider yourself human. The Holy Trinity is what connects us to all living matter. We can use a few words at this point that we've used over time. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all living matter has these three components in common. The Father equals blood. All living matter carries DNA continually through their entire system through the Father, <clears throat> the living cell. Everything considered to us as living matter contains a common trait that we can conceive in this moment and call the cell. The Father equals cellular memory slash intelligence. The sun equals water. All living matter carries water and the memory and structure of water that feeds the cells and keeps it strong and healthy without continual recycling of the water through the cells of living matter the being would cease to live. And the Holy Ghost is equals thought. Each cell is motivated and transported into action by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thought is actually a limiting word and at one point we might replace the word. The word ghost is actually more comprehensive in this discussion than the word thought. We think that we're not connected with animals because we have not yet actualized animals and plants to have thoughts. Jesus tells us in John 6 39 and this is the Father's will which he had which hath <laughs> let me try it again and this is the Father's will which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. Let me show you that phrase and I'll show you this picture real quick. Let's see. Yeah. 
And here's the picture at the top of the next page. And you've probably all seen that picture. You know. Um, <laughs> the switching back and forth, sorry. Now if it's going to focus, come on. When we're able to comprehend that that all neighbors that wait, when we are able to comprehend that all neighbors on our planet Earth have these three things in common, we shed light into the wilderness for all of us to see. There's no living creature that is not filled with blood, water, and the ghost of God thought to keep it alive. Years, years, and more years. Generation upon generation of learned behavior passed down through time. None is wrong. <clears throat> None is to be ignored, abandoned, or neglected. All have eaten from the other tree and have done their daily worship to ensure the survival of that tree. We've been doing God's will our entire lives, no matter the name, faith, or label it is called. If your life is revolved around what you call a career, you're no different than the nun who's devoted her life to Christ. If you've never mentioned the word God, you're no better, and no better or worse than Buddha himself. The illusion of separation from this story comes to light for us gradually. The story of God, the Father, and Christ, the Son, and how it connects with all that is through the power of thought, the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> brings forth a new world for us when we become, when we, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't want to make faces and have a weird voice for you. When we become aware that we've been programmed and enslaved through all means of written or published material, we start to look into the wilderness for another garden to give us our sustenance. We slowly, without shame or guilt, begin to realize that what we've been taught, what our mothers and fathers were taught, our grandmothers and grandfathers were taught, and on and on and on was a misconception of the truth. And we realize at some point that it is not their fault. They too were taught to eat from the other tree. Their, <clears throat> their intention was to do what was right and best for their families and their futures. We're taught basically to care for ourselves and our loved ones. To care only for ourselves and our loved ones. We've not yet grasped that all is exactly the same, one in the same, and we may choose in any moment to eat from the tree of life. I love this picture I got right here, and I know I'll never be able to use it, but I just think it's awesome. Sorry. Okay, now this next part, maybe I should read to you. This is, this is where I start using and going into the concordance. <clears throat> so we go to Genesis 2, 9. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in, in the midst of the garden. And then, okay, let me just, this is my book that I'm still editing from, so you're going to see scribbles in it. But. Okay, so, let's see if we can get that. Let's 
see here where we are going to look up the words tree and life <clears throat> from this phrase, the tree of life. So we'll go to the Hebrew 6086 for tree and Hebrew 2416 for life. So now we'll go to another phrase, Genesis 3.24. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim, cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So then it sends us to this same Hebrew for tree and same for life. See, so it's sending us the words in these two phrases, tree and life, will take us to the same definition. So here is Hebrew 6086. Atas. And, it, and then it sends us to Hebrew 6095. This one means a tree from its firmness, hence wood, sticks, plus carpenter, gallows, hell, pine, plus pine, plank, staff, stock, stick, stock, timber, tree, wood. Sounds like a tree, right? But we'll go back to this one that it sends us to, which is right here. Otsa, a prime root. Now what you want to do is you want to look for this. This is the like the bottom where to fasten or make firm, to close the eyes shut. So now, get that? So tree, when you break it back to its original prime root meaning, means to close the eyes shut. Okay, let's look at life. Life is kai. It comes from here, which means alive, hence raw, flesh, fresh, <clears throat> plant, water, year, strong, living thing, age, alive, appetite, wild beast, company, congregation. Now words I put in blue, these are uh, will match up with other words throughout the book. It's why the blue. Okay, and then it takes us to H2421. So we go to H2421. That's kaya, a prime root. That's what we want is the bottom, the prime root of the word. To promise life, to live. Revive, alive, certainly give promised life. Let suffer to live, nourish up, preserve alive, quicken, recover, repair, restore to life. Revive times God, save times surely and be whole. So see, this is this talking about what the tree of life, this definition goes into those, would go with these two phrases. <laughs> I hope that's making a little bit of sense and it may seem, like I said, tedious and boring, but if we read every word, suddenly we start to understand how the words have been used, right? Uh, we'll just keep going with it, and, and I'll keep going on to Chapter 4. Thanks for watching, and thanks for being you.